figure out better ways to do this. But uh, definitely the most important thing is like using stuff that you can talk with other developers about because the, the hardest part of all this is like <laughs> figuring out what what you're trying to build. I mean, it's kind of obvious to say, but um, any one of these things would, would serve fun. So the last thing that I'd like to just, I'd like to give two shout outs to books that I found extremely useful. And if, if this presentation was bad, like it's okay, but like read this book um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff. Um, it's got great, it's got a great overview of the theory behind all this. It has three examples of actually building a hypermedia API and a client uh, with varying levels of like functionality. And it's just, it's really great. Um, probably uh, easily the best book that I've ever on the subject. And then it, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Steve. Um, I don't think his book's technically complete yet, but uh, he's, he's written a book called Designing Hypermedia APIs. And um, it's it's a pleasure to read. And he's got a lot of, a lot of the same great stuff that uh, Mike has. Uh, but it's it's written in the voice of Steve, and and Steve's great, so so that's all I've got. There's a, a pretty much a links together and a pin board tag if you're interested in reading more, and I can put that on the meetup page. Are there any questions? This might be a super newbie question. Um, it seems like the links idea, which is very cool is a way to kind of shoehorn some new verbs into a protocol mm, that mm -hmm. doesn't have any domain-specific stuff. Uh, and I like that. But my question is, it seems like that's where all the magic is. Mm -hmm. That's where there's no necessarily convention. Uh, it's very implicit, not explicit. Um, so I just wonder if there's any kind of informal, uh, agreed-upon good practices that, that people like you are using because if we all invent our own little links system. Right. Yeah, so there are like two layers of, of ways that you can reinvent the wheel with links. Um, you can make up your own format for links. So like I had something like, uh, what was it? So in this case, I have like the link relation maps to the link URL or the link path. Um, it also applies only get. Yeah, so that, that's another. So there, are, with in terms of the, so I guess there are three ways that you can kind of like rotate this problem. You can invent new ways to represent links. Um, one of those new ways might include the verb that you should use. Um, Though another way that you can do it, or another way that you can approach it, is to say that a link with a certain type of relation will only ever respond to a certain verb. I think Atom protocol, like the feed publishing protocol, does that. Like, I want to say the edit link only responds to put. Um, but in terms of the relations themselves, uh, that, that is an important part of the media type, and so it, it it is like ad hoc, but only to the extent that it's that you just like change it all the time. It should be something that you and the client agree on. Uh, like if you agree on anything, you should agree on links, um, and from there, you know, you get a lot of the flexibility of well, now I don't have to remember the exact URL. I just know that I'm looking for the related. Um, and actually, you know, shame on me for using verbs in here. This really should be like related resources. So it should be like cookbook version with, with like an array of links and then it'd be like first version, second version, third version. Um, it is convenient though to just shoehorn and unshare. Yeah, 
Um, and honestly, like, I'm not even sure if that's a good idea. Yeah, um, so, yeah, so my question really was going to be, so whenever I need to do anything on a cookbook, I always have to query that cookbook before I know what I can do with it. Right. And yeah, what kind of research plan have you had with that? Yeah, um, most of the time, and, and at least in the APIs that I built, it's those links are built in response to like UI elements. So it's like I would see a delete button if there was an unshare mm -hmm. link. So it sort of goes um, it sort of goes hand in hand with like before you even show the user what they can do with it. Like you have to know this sort of stuff. Um, so it's like the order of operation goes like UI, then the then the response, and then the implementation. So we try to get that so so that we're we're not um, causing the client to like wait. Oh, or we want to we don't want to cause the client to like traverse this massive tree of API responses to know what they can do on this screen. So often, if we find ourselves doing that, we'll just kind of like uh, Steve Klabnik calls this collapsing. So if you find that you need to search from any anywhere, you might just have search be a link in every response with a template that allows you to sort of fill it in based on whatever screen you're on. Um, on the same vein, I've been researching the eyes uh, not for too terribly long, but I've ran across the options verb in the HTTP spec. It seems like nobody uses it. There's also right. a blog out there saying, hey, we should come up with some sort of formal documentation. Uh, I think that'd be very cool to use the options verb more, um, especially. Um, so one thing that I that I didn't really talk about was the maybe pipe dream of having these like autom these like generic hypermedia clients, which could use something like the options verb to look at a link relation and then say like, well, what can I do with this and figure it out just by asking the API. So everything the API knows all and it can tell you what you can do. Um, I guess my, my fear in something like, so like a lot of my API experiences like an iOS app or an Angular app or something, I, f I fear that there would be a lot of additional overhead doing that and not like kind of making the trade-off of having some of that knowledge in the client itself or bloating the media type with that sort of information. It does, uh, but I don't know it well enough to really sell it. <laughs> but yeah, there's it's um, there's some really really intelligent people who wrote a lot about this kind of stuff working on that. So I'm really optimistic about it. All right. All right. Thank you very much. So what we're going to do now is take a five or ten-ish, five to ten minute break. Um, there are restrooms just across the hall here if you need to use the restroom. Um, feel free to grab something else and then we're going to come back and we're going to have Steve talk about uh, JavaScript front ends. Thank you very much. Great job.